Danny is an independent filmmaker, writer, and activist who specializes in economic and media issues. He is executive editor of MediaChannel.org, the world's largest online media issues online network, and recipient of many awards, including one for his News Dissector blog. He spent many years in Boston area media at WBCN, WGBH, and WCVB. He worked for CNN and ABC News, has written 11 books on social and political issues, and directed 30 documentaries, including his latest, Plunder, The Crime of Our Time, on the financial crisis as a crime story. Welcome, please, Danny Schechter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's deja vu all over again, <laughs> at least for me, being back at MIT, being back with the anti-war movement of New England, a little older, a little grayer, uh, but not any less angry and any less upset about what's happening in our world. So I'm happy uh, to be with you. We have within our grasp the potential of building the kind of movement that was talked about earlier, about reaching out to the discontented, to the people for whom the Obama administration is, to use one of his words, a teachable moment in time, because clearly uh, the people who have been disillusioned didn't just get to be disillusioned, they were illusioned. <laughs> they were illusioned with the idea that somehow power resides in a political office. And what we're learning again, which is an old lesson uh, about, you know, who really runs this country? Who has the power? Is it in our elected politicians or is it in an unelected uh, state of corporations, of bureaucracies, of various institutions of power that are unaccountable, lack transparency, uh, and in, in fact, capture, capture is the word, those institutions that they're supposed to be regulating or overseeing. We've seen that very, very clearly uh, with the crimes of Wall Street, and I'm insisting today that what we've experienced in terms of the collapse of our economy is not just a failure of bad business models and people sort of misassess, they believe that housing would go up in value, but oh my God, it went down, and how, why didn't I know that, that that could happen? No, this was a calculated criminal enterprise. We have, we have RICO laws designed to prosecute this. We're talking about 14 million plus Americans who've lost their homes, who were talked into mortgages, that the people who talked them into mortgages knew were bogus from the very beginning, and the securitization of those loans, the reselling of them all over the world uh, with inflated values, you know, sort of Moody's AAA ratings and the like, uh, when they in fact were assetless assets, and then the insuring of all of that, and the leveraging of all of that, which led to hundred, over $100 trillion in losses, which we cannot easily recover from, nor will we easily recover from. We need an institutional analysis here, not just a bad people analysis, and that's what I keep hearing. Obama did this, Obama did that. I'll ask you a question, what did you expect? <laughs> Forgive me. I lived for many years in the People's Republic of Somerville <laughs> and later learned to my chagrin that up the street on Broadway at Dartmouth Street there lived a young law student named Barack Hussein Obama who lived in our midst, was part of this uh, community as well, but didn't seem to learn very much from the traditions, the people's history, if you will, of New England, the people's history of our country. There is a continuity of ideology, a continuity of the way our country has been run over many, many, many years. And it is interesting that there is a group in our midst who have turned to Boston, have turned to the experience in Boston, appropriating it for a credibly reactionary movement, uh, the Tea Party movement, based on the Tea Party here. And who has said anything about this? Who has raised a question about this? Where were the people talking about Afghanistan during the Democratic, uh, the special election here in Massachusetts? I heard nothing about it. It may be it, there were some, you know, people uh, talking about it, but I, I didn't hear it, certainly not in the media. And part of the problem is the media itself. 
You know, I used to think, you know, that, that somehow if I could get into the media, if I could infiltrate in the media, not, you know, but, you know, I could have a big impact. And indeed, you know, I worked in commercial radio for 10 years. I worked at ABC News and worked at CNN for many years. And I did some pieces I'm very proud of, including a piece, lest we forget, that the high security units, the model for Guantanamo, was not developed in Cuba. It was developed here in America. Marion, uh, you know. Illinois, Marion, Illinois. Marion, Illinois, for one, and Pelican Bay today. And in every state in the union, there's a so-called high security un unit, Green, uh, in Pennsylvania, where Mamu Mamiya Abu Jamal may be living out his last days. Uh, so this is not something that was designed uh, somewhere else in the Spanish Inquisition, you know, by some pope who was flagellating himself. No. <laughs> this is something that's been institutionalized, made in the USA. And we have to recognize that and try to think about that. And so what, what I've come here to say really is not something that I think people may, may not want to hear. We are not winning. We are losing. We are losing badly at a time when the people in the world want us to do better, want us to speak out on their behalf. This morning, the New York Times reports that, that a plane load, two plane loads of desperately ill people from Haiti were not allowed to land in the United States. By who? The U.S. military. Because it wasn't clear who would pay their hospital bills. That happened. Yesterday, it was reported by the Associated Press that of every dollar earmarked for aid in Haiti, 33 cents is going to the U.S. military, and one cent, one penny, is going, <laughs> is going uh, to the Haitian government. At the same time, the Haitian government is being attacked for corruption. It can't handle, you know, we have to step in. Hillary Clinton uh, flew into Haiti with a proposed measure to uh, encourage the government there to create the legislative basis for martial law, the very things that we've heard talked about here, and the event of looting and you know the uprising, which is a certainty there given the, the poor distribution of aid. The airport was shut down, I believe, for six hours. No relief flights could come in as because of her security uh, and the security of her contingent. That's what's going on today, and we have to learn to read between the lines. We have to think about what is a counter narrative to this? How do we communicate it? My own media channel.org, which we started 10 years ago, and I've had online every day uh, with commentary and analysis, uh, maybe in its last month. We started it on February 1st, which is, by the way, the anniversary of the student civil rights movement, the sit in movement in Greensboro, North Carolina. We wanted to uh, acknowledge the inspiration of that movement. And now we may be facing the final month because why? Because progressives don't support independent media. Progressives don't watch television by and large. They don't connect to what Americans are learning about and hearing about. I made a film, WMD, Weapons of Mass Deception. And what was it about? How was the Iraq war sold in America? And to many on the left, it was sold by one person. Judith Miller of the New York Times. It's all her fault. She, just, you know, she lied to us, uh, her facts were wrong, and the like. And left out of the equation is American television, which, which pounded away selling the war every single day uh, and, and rewarded and honored the people who were fighting it and dis ignored and disregarded the people who were opposing it. But American television was not something on the minds of the American anti-war movement. We marched on Washington and we yelled at Bush, 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 it's his fault. Who marched on the Washington Post that supported this war uh, with its editorial positions day after day after day? No one, not one march on the Washington Post. Because we don't understand that in today's world, it's not just the government, it's not just the president, it's an institutional arrangement, including our media system. And that system has to be challenged, and it has to be confronted, and it has to be uh, responded to. We, we're, we're debating terror over Detroit. We're not discussing terror in Detroit. 
where people are losing their homes, losing their livelihoods, losing their jobs, losing their hope. What message do we have to them and for them? We know what we're against, but what are we for? How can we connect to people in the world who are struggling? Last point, how, what country in the world has lost the most people in a war uh, since the end of World War II? Anyone? What country? Not Iraq, not Afghanistan, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. That's where millions of people have been lost in a war. I just came back from the Congo. I'm working on a film about it now. It's a, a horrendous situation, but American activists have had very little to say about it, even as we buy uh, cell phones that are made with the coltan mine there illegally. So these are issues we have to learn to think about and connect to. Thank you very much for having me here.